This video shows you how to operate the DSM-501 Micro R meter. This meter is used to survey gamma and x-ray at the Micro R level. The range is 1 micro Röntgen per hour to 10 milli Röntgens per hour. This Micro R meter features plastic scintillation, which is ideal for dose measurement because it is near tissue equivalent. The DSM-501 features rate meter mode, which measures in dose and counts, in scalar mode, measuring counts over a set time interval. The DSM-501 can be used for nuclear power plant applications, health physics applications, medical physics applications, emergency response, hospital laundry and trash, or wherever dose measurement at the micro R level is required. Other applications include oil refineries, for instance, checking for norm radiation in oil conduits, and scrap metal facilities, such as checking scrap loads for radiation. Before we perform a field demonstration, let's have a closer look at the unit. As we power up, notice the oversized digital display. The detector window is located on the bottom front. This is where we aim and hover over the area of interest. Starting out in rate meter mode, we can turn on the meter face light, switching this control upward. This illuminates the display nicely for 30 seconds. The rate meter mode features dose in micro R per hour and counts in CPM, counts per minute. We can change easily to international units via an internal switch. We will demonstrate that later on in the video. At this time, we are detecting background radiation which appears to be about 6 to 7 micro R per hour. We will test the response of the DSM-501 with a 10 micro Curie cesium-137 source, spaced at about 2 feet from the detector window. Right now it is reading about 17 to 20 micro R per hour. We will now check out the speaker function. This switch toggles the speaker on and off. The speaker can respond faster than the meter display, so most keep it on during the survey, but it can also be turned off. The scalar mode displays and counts, total counts over a set time interval. The interval is adjustable by the user, with counting times from 10 to 2550 seconds, in 10 second increments. The scalar is now set at a 10 second count interval for demonstration purposes. We will test the scalar mode using a 1 micro Curie cesium-137 check source. First, turn to scalar mode. Place the source near the detector window. As the scalar counts to 10 seconds, we wait. The reading is 1,287 counts. For scalar mode, it is easy to make time interval adjustments. First, open the instrument, unfastening the latches at both ends. To set the count time interval, make sure the meter is on in scalar mode. Find the internal blue switch, SW4, and turn to position 1 with a small screwdriver. Press the black button SW5 so that we see the word CAL appear on the display. Adjust the potentiometer P3, which is located on the other side of the circuit board. P3 is indicated by the multiplier times 100. The potentiometers are basically screws, so with a small screwdriver, turn to toggle to the desired value. This time, we are changing from 10 seconds set time to 60 seconds. Now press the black button SW5 again. Turn the blue switch SW4 back to zero if finished. Now we will try the scalar mode set at a 60 second time interval. It's the same as before, simply turn the scalar mode on, place the source near the window, and after 60 seconds, skipping ahead, the scalar yields 4056 counts over 60 seconds. The DSM-501 includes both operational and overrange alarms. Both are user set. For the operational alarm set point, the rule of thumb is to set it at twice the background. Our background is about 7 micro R per hour. 
For our demonstration, we will set it at a little over, at 20 micro R per hour. This helps us locate low-level radiation while avoiding excess noise. The overrange alarm is often set at 15 milli R per hour, somewhat above the upper limit of the meter range. Both alarms are disabled when set at zero. To set the operational alarm, make sure the meter is on rate meter dose mode. Go inside again, turn to position 2 on the blue internal switch SW4. Press the black button SW5 so that CAL appears on the display. This time we locate potentiometers P1 marked by multiplier times 1 for course adjustment and P2 marked by multiplier times 10 for fine adjustment. Set with a screwdriver to desired set alarm rate. This time it's 20 micro Rinkins per hour. Press the black button SW5 again. Turn the blue switch SW4 back to zero. For the overrange alarm setting, the procedure is similar. Make sure the meter is on rate meter dose mode, but turn to position three on the internal blue switch SW4. Again, press the black button SW5 so that the word cal appears on the display. We again locate the P1 and P2 potentiometers. Turning the screws, toggle to the desired set alarm rate. This time, 15 millirentgens per hour. Press the black button, SW5 again. Turn the blue switch, SW4, back to zero. Note, be careful not to switch SW4 to other positions, which could adversely affect the calibration. Schematics are available if there is any confusion in finding the internal controls. We will now test the operational alarm with a weak 1 microcurie cesium-137 source. We won't test the overrange alarm because we don't have a source at hand with a high enough activity. Please note that with readings past 15 millirentgens per hour, the results are not accurate. Other controls include the fast slow switch, which controls the response time. Operating in the fast mode will yield a quicker response, but a less accurate reading. Typically use the fast setting in the field. The time constant for this mode is 20 seconds. Utilizing the slow mode will result in a more stable, accurate reading, but it will require the operator to scan the area of interest at a much slower rate. For slow mode, the time constant is 100 seconds. This mode is more ideal for area monitoring or a background count. The zero switch is activated by holding down this switch for three seconds. It resets the display to zero and temporarily disables the operational alarm. We can change units easily and without recalibration. International users may change Rinken to sieverts and counts per minute, CPM, to counts per second, CPS. First, we open up the meter again. The controls used to switch units of dose and counts are located on the LCD PC board. This is the circuit board closest to the display. If you look closely, you can see the markings Sieverts to R and CPS to CPM. Both switches are clearly marked and located on opposite sides of the board from each other. Now switch units with a small screwdriver. After you switch the units on the circuit board, reassemble the meter. The SI units will now appear on the display. Sieverts for dose and CPS for counts. The DSM-501 plastic scintillation crystal has advantages over sodium iodide in certain applications. Plastic is less dense, less expensive, and better in temperature fluctuations. For example, plastic is not hydroscopic like sodium iodide. Sodium iodide can crack in temperature fluctuations due to absorption of moisture. Plastic crystals are thus more rugged. The plastic scintillation crystal in the probe is near tissue equivalent. It absorbs radiation dose at the rate in close proximity to human tissue. It is more accurate in approximating actual dose than an inorganic crystal like sodium iodide or cesium iodide. 
Plastic yields a more linear, flatter energy response than sodium iodide. The sodium iodide detector can over-respond with energies lower than cesium-137. For non-spectroscopic gamma detection work, plastic scintillation is a better choice than inorganic scintillation. For a demonstration of field use, today we will survey a bit of trash. For a quick start survey, power up in rate meter dose mode. Make sure the unit is switched to fast mode and the speaker is turned on. First, observe normal background readings. We know that the operational alarm is set appropriately at somewhat higher than twice background. The probe detector window should be held about one half inch away from the surface being surveyed. Depending on the environment, the detector window could be held even further away if the surface is rough and dirty. We want to protect the fragile detector window. One half inch is fine for today though. Slowly cover the given area of what you wish to survey. Move the unit slowly at approximately one to two inches per second. If the dose rate spikes while surveying, pause for five to 10 seconds over the area to provide adequate time for instrument response. After detecting a spike in radiation emission, further investigate to locate the source, which was a one microcurie cesium-137 source. That concludes our demonstration for today. For specifications and ordering information, follow the links provided. For an external probe version of this survey meter, we offer the DSM-500 with an external plastic scintillation probe, the MRSP-1. A sodium iodide probe, model GSP-1, and other probes are available. Other links are provided for those options. Thanks for watching and have a great day.